This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in Aotearoa. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. I'm sorry there wasn't a show last week, but I had a very nice rest at Thanksgiving and I'm back and raring to go. We start today's show with some news of EV sales during the month of November. And unlike this time last year, where Kiwi customers were snapping up EVs at record rates, things haven't been looking great of late. Overall, the Kiwi market for new cars fell 16.2% in November year over year, but EVs suffered the most with just 5.8% or 700 of the new cars registered during November being electric. That's down from nearly 6,000 this time last year, clearly influenced by the removal of EV incentives and the introduction of road usage charges. EV adoption rates in Aotearoa, New Zealand are now among some of the worst in the world, but luckily there's still hope elsewhere. The BYD just celebrated selling nearly 200,000 EVs in its home market of China last month. Like Thanos, EVs are inevitable. Back in 2021, Audi revealed its Audi A6 e-tron concept car in Shanghai, and this week the automaker officially celebrated its official launch. Packed to the brim with technology and built on the Volkswagen Group's PPE platform, the Audi A6 e-tron comes in two main guises, a sportback and a wagon, called the Avant, with various configuration options available for each. At the entry-level end, there's the A6 e-tron with rear-wheel drive and a 75.8 kilowatt-hour usable battery pack, priced from €62,800. At the other end of the lineup, each body-style variant gets an Audi S6 e-tron variant with Audi Quattro all-wheel drive and upwards of 543 horses at the wheels. Early reviews are very positive, and those two should cross very nicely against the BMW i5 and Mercedes-Benz EQE. As Volkswagen tries to curb some of what have been some pretty big losses this year thanks to tough competition from Chinese EV companies, it has threatened job and pay cuts. Now, factory workers at nine Volkswagen facilities in its home market of Germany have begun to take industrial action. On Monday this week, staff walked out for several hours at both EV and ice production facilities in response to Volkswagen's plans to close at least three factories, resulting in thousands of job losses, while simultaneously slashing pay for those it keeps employed. Volkswagen is currently in talks with labor union IG Metall, a union that represents more than 120,000 Volkswagen factory workers. Right now, both sides seem at an impasse and further industrial action is planned. General Motors has announced it will be selling off its stake in the Ultium Cells LLC production facility that it co-owns in Lansing, Michigan with Ultium co-owner LG Energy Solutions, leaving LG Energy Solutions the sole owner of the yet-to-be-completed facility. You might think this means that GM is selling out its Ultium Cells stake completely, and given that GM has signalled it's looking for other battery partners, that assumption might be logical. But GM was careful to reiterate this week in its statement that, at this time, it has no intention of selling its stake in the two other Ultium Cell production facilities that are operational in the US, both of which are already producing lithium-ion battery cells that it's being used in its current generation of EVs. GM and LG Energy Solution also announced an extension of their existing battery partnership to include developing new prismatic energy cells for use in future vehicles. Telematics connectivity is one of the killer features of modern EVs, allowing you, the owner, to check on your vehicle's state of charge, precondition the cabin and so much more. And if you're a little nerdy, you might make use of unofficial third-party apps that extend functionality beyond the official app for your car, as I personally do with various Home Assistant plugins. And while most automakers haven't really been all that happy about third-party developers figuring out ways to use the company's API, Tesla has, to date, been pretty chill about it, as long as the developer doesn't do anything that poses harm to Tesla or its vehicles. That's now changed, and this week 
week, Tesla released details of a new pay-to-play setup for access for third-party app developers, meaning anyone who wants to build a third-party application for Tesla customers will now have to pay to access Tesla's API. One popular Tesla app developer, as reported by Electrek, says they'd face a bill of around $60 million a year to give customers API access, well above any income they actually receive from the sales of their app. The news came shortly after Tesla announced its new Apple Watch app. Aptera has officially confirmed that it will be unveiling its production and tent version of its solar electric vehicle at CES 2025 next month. It began assembling its first production and tent vehicles in September, using them to carry out the final production validation and crash testing. But January's debut will be the first time a fully finished production and tent model will be shown to the public. Aptera has stated it plans to begin limited volume production for its first customers next year, but this week also reopened its crowdfunding portal in order to raise an additional 60 million US dollars in capital to aid it in finalizing its early series production plans. If I had to guess, threatened trade tariffs in the US could cause Aptera additional headaches, but that is purely my own personal guess. Watch this space. Although it has dramatically sowed production of its just-released Explorer EV and Capri EV in Europe, Ford pushed ahead this week with the launch of its newest European EV. Enter the Puma Gen E, an all-electric variant of its already in-production Puma Subcompact. Fitted the 43 kilowatt hour usable battery pack, it's the smallest EV in Ford's portfolio to date and offers a WLTP claimed range of 233 miles, 374 kilometers per charge. While real world range is likely to be less, the five door hatch does offer 100 kilowatt fast charging, which, considering its smallish capacity battery pack, isn't too shabby at all. Given that the ICE variant of the Puma, fitted with the EcoBoost engine, is Ford's number one car right now in Europe, the brand hopes its EV variant can pick up sales where the Capri EV and Explorer EV have failed. Australian mining company Fortescue, which acquired UK engineering firm WAE Technologies a few years ago, has announced receipt of a massive 10 million Australian dollar grant to continue development of a 6 megawatt fast charger. Currently, the fastest commercial charging stations top out at around a megawatt and are primarily used for charging long-distance big rigs. But the unit being developed by Fortescue takes that to a whole new level, building infrastructure that's suitable for use with the massive 240-ton all-electric mining trucks Fortescue is already operating at some of its facilities in Australia. In industrial applications like this, being able to refuel quickly is essential to keeping mining operations going efficiently. But looking forward, charging systems like this could have a future in other non-mining applications like charging solutions for massive all-electric ships or ferries. While China is currently seen as the world's largest market for EVs, Norway has remained the world leader in EV market share thanks in part to its generous EV incentive programs. In place for more than a decade, we've watched as new car sales in Norway have become mostly electric, celebrating as they first went on par with gasoline vehicles, then all internal combustion engine vehicles, and then dominated new car registrations. Last month, Norway reached a new record, with 93.6% of new cars sold during November being all electric. To put that into perspective, 749 new vehicles registered were non-plug-in, 154 were plug-in hybrids, and the rest, 10,940? all electric, with Tesla enjoying the top two spots for sales. I'm sure you're more than aware of the really amazing cars coming out of BYD these days, and for those looking to buy an EV in Aotearoa, New Zealand, they are a must to try. Our very own Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge has been test driving some of the BYD models available on the market now, but there might soon be a new model to enjoy in the form of the BYD Atto 3 Up. According to official trademark records, BYD has trademarked the name for use in Kiwi and Australian markets, suggesting a new model is coming. Coming. What will it be? Well, according to those in the know, it's most likely going to be the Yuan Up, the SUV-inspired sibling to the Yuan Plus. The Yuan Plus, I hear you say? Yep, that's the car that is better known in English language markets as the Atto 3. It all checks out.
Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It's packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you, and includes tons of details about available vehicles, daily life with an EV, how to file and pay those annoying RUCs, and so much more. So follow the link below and start your journey today. As I have said plenty of times before on this channel, both Kate and I and Michael, in fact, as well as Gavin, are fans of classic cars, and we've all spent time turning wrenches on them. So when conversion kits come up on our newsfeed, you know we're going to look at them. This week, though, we have something a little different. Instead of it being a vintage classic, it's something a little more modern the iconic Mazda Miata, or MX-5 if you prefer. You can now buy a full plug-and-play kit for this iconic sports car thanks to UK specialist Electrogenic. For now, the kit, which offers 150 miles of range and a 100 kilogram, 220 pound weight increase on the original vehicle, is only available for the first generation MX-5, and as of the time of filming, the price hasn't been released yet. Still, if you've got the money and the love, it's now possible, and it's also a no drill or cut, meaning you can revert to petrol later. Although I can't imagine why. <laughs> and finally, we've seen a dramatic rise in anti-EV sentiment in our comments section and on social media in general, and that's starting to leak into the real world as well. Some of that comes in the form of people harassing EV owners at charging stations or in a parking lot, and then of course there's the phenomenon of icing, internal combustion engine vehicle owners purposely, maliciously parking their vehicles in front of charging stations so that EVs can't. This week, courtesy of Inside EVs, we learn that the EV haters are now taking their trolling to a whole new level, with Amazon now selling what's being marketed as a fake prank EV charging port, but which I'm sure we all realise is actually designed to take up space at EV charging sites and stop EV owners from charging at all. I would say that my faith in humankind is now at an all nine low, but the reviews for this item on Amazon, well, they are a mix of trolling the trolls and karmic payback. EV charging station parking spaces are for EVs that are actively charging nobody else. And on that note, we're done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, it's high time to switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch and when you do, you'll help the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week as usual, and in the meantime, do check out other videos on this channel, including from the lovely Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge. Some of the things he's been doing of late have been incredible, and his videos all rock. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have an amazing week. Ka day. See you next time.